and trust you good whoever you are, and you're experiencing the Lord's favor in your life. As we continue with our biblical discourse, we are going to look at Genesis chapter 22. This is the chapter where Abraham, God requests him to sacrifice his son, Isaac. So now, a few nuggets that I got from uh, reading that chapter. So the first one would be obedience. You know, that uh, when God made the request uh, on Abraham to say, may you please sacrifice Isaac, he did not deal day. The following day, the following day after the request was made, he woke up early and set out his way to go sacrifice the young man. I started thinking, had he did day, let's say he took a week or two before he could uh, perform the sacrifice, would it have been met the same way? Yeah, it was met ultimately. You know, when you read the chapter, you understand that Isaac was swapped with the, the ram. But would he have been met with the same attitude had he did it? So I guess that's the first challenge to ask them to say, let us be obedient to God's word. First Samuel 15, 23, 15, verse 22 to 23 says, Obedience is better than sacrifice. So it does not matter how much you may sacrifice or what you may sacrifice. If you are not doing it out of obedience, that sacrifice becomes nullified. So that's what I, the first thing that I got from this chapter, that I need to be obedient to God's word. So now, let's do a, a lead mass test. Let's turn to Matthew 16 verse 24. It reads as follows. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciples must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. Here's a commandment. It says, if you want to be the, a disciple to Christ, you must deny yourself. You know what you need to deny. And it says, take up your cross. You know what's your cross. And follow me. So now, that's the first commandment. So, obedience. So the, the next uh, litmus test, let's look at John 14, verse 15. It reads as follows, if you love me, this is just Christ speaking, if you love me, keep my commandments. So now, if you love him, <laughs> we will keep his commandments, another uh, obedience being requested from us. So now, the next aspect, that the, the next thing that I saw as I was looking at uh, this chapter, the resourcefulness of Abraham, God made the request. As for everything else, he had to organize, you know, the fire, uh, the wood, uh, the altar, everything he had to organize to make sure that the sacrifice does happen. So that's the other thing that we need to, to work on, that we need to be resourceful in the kingdom, you know. You know, one thing that I've learned is when you're operating in God's will, he will connect you with people who will provide you with the resources or he will give you the ability, the strength to acquire the wealth, you yourself. You know, that's the uh, next thing, the, the, one of the things that I saw. The next thing that I saw is levels. Uh, when you look at verse, verse 5 of Genesis 22, let's go there and read it. It reads as follows. He said to his servant, Stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and we will come back to you. So now, family, there comes a time where you need to know the levels. You need to know that the people you started with, they might not make it to the top of the mountain with you. So you need to know, discern that they need to be left with the donkeys so that you can progress. It might not be nice, but for you to progress, you might have to certain people leave cut at that level, cut at that level, so that you can progress to the next level. Not everyone, but the certain people. So now he calls uh, sacrifice worship. So that's another form of worship that whenever you sacrifice yourself, basically, whenever you sacrifice, you are worshiping. You sacrifice an hour or two in prayer or in uh, worship or reading the word, you know, that would be sacrifice, that would be a sacrifice, that would be worship unto God. So we need to uh, learn that. The next thing that I, I, I saw or I learned was for the longest of time, I, I thought that Isaac 
was a very young man when he was going to be crucified. But as I looked at that chapter even more and meditated on it, I started seeing that Isaac was at an age of understanding. He was able to see that, uh, the ingredients, he was able to see the ingredients of the fire. He was able to see the, the altar. Hey, even when Abraham tied him down to, uh, to the altar, he was able to recognize him. It seems like I'm the sacrifice here. And he did not complain, you know. Hence I said, I think he's the hero of the story. He did not complain. Hence, a shadow of Christ, you know, like a lamb being led to the slaughter. He did not complain or start wanting, or he ran, running away, he wanted to run away from yeah, the sacrifice, the ritual that was about to be done. But he said, you know what, I trust my father that it, all things were for good, <laughs> you know? So now that's the other thing that I learned. And then uh, the next aspect would be new information. When the story started, God said, sacrifice Isaac. But as they reached the moment, you know, the crux of the matter, just as he was about to put the knife to his throat, an angel appeared and told them, hey, stop what you're about to do. There's a ram over there, sacrifice it. God has seen your heart and he's pleased. So now, imagine with me, had Isaac, had Abraham insisted on operating with the information that he started with, he would have sacrificed his son. He said, no, God said I must do this and he followed it to the T. Yes, when he started, that was the instruction, but as we reach the end of the story, the instruction changes. So this is, yes, as we progress in the kingdom, we need to discern or recognize the voice of God, be able to hear new instructions, new information, you know, as we progress in the kingdom, that the information that we started with might not be relevant as we finish the, the race or we are towards the end. We need to be able to hear the voice of God and descend and always, always uh, hear from Him. I think there's a passage as you read that it says, as He was looking down, you know, as He was looking down to the dirt and He was about to sacrifice, uh, the angel came from above, of course. So now, one thing that I saw, it says, as long as we look down, we won't find our answers, but if we look up, that's where our answers will come from. So we need to make it a habit of looking up. I think Les Brown says, if you fall, make sure you fall on your back, so that because when you look up, you can get up. Amen. So now, the next aspect of uh, our sermon for today, we, we will look at verse 13. No, 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 that's still uh, new information. The next aspect is the realm itself, you know, that uh, as he was about to make the switch, that when we study the realm, you find that the realm was caught in a thicket, in a bush, by its horns. So as I was looking at that, one, you need to understand that the, the realm uses its horns to fight. So the horns would symbolize the strength of the realm. So it was caught by its strength in the bush. So now I started thinking about that, uh, that it fought, I, I assume that it fought and fought to a point where it got tired. By the time Abraham went to take it, it didn't even fight, it just yeah, it, it succumbed to it being taken and being slaughtered. So I was thinking about that, that this is the plot of the enemy to catch us by our strength, to hold us by our strength so that if we stop fighting yeah, mental uh, enslavement, you know? So we need to fight that tactic to say, you know what? What is our strength? Our, say one, uh, our mind. Say whatever the mind can conceive, you can do, you know? Whatever you can conceive, you shall bring it to fruition. So now, we need to be careful so that we do not get caught uh, by our strength in a, in a bush or wherever so that he does not use them against us. Because I truly believe the battle is over the mind whenever it comes to uh, the, the devil and God. He's fighting for our minds, uh, this, 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 this evil one. So we need to, let's not find ourselves caught in a thicket like the rain. So that's the other thing, that's the other thing that I saw as I was looking at uh, that particular uh, chapter, chapter 22. But as we progress through chapter 23, this is the account where Sarah uh, passes over and dies. 
I think the prophet Ecclesiastes says there's a time for everything. You know, time to laugh and time to cry. So I guess in this chapter is a time for Abraham to cry. I thank you for